Good afternoon, and welcome to the 20th annual uh, Chicago Poetry Fest and the 15th annual Haiku, Haiku Fest Chicago. We're very happy you could join us today, especially considering how the weather is looking outside. Um, I'd like to thank Regina harris Bayaki very much for all she has done in organizing this program and bringing poetry to so many children around the city. Um, I, I know you will enjoy this program and hearing all these wonderful children uh, reciting their own poetry. So um, thank you very much and let's open the festivities. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. My name is Regina harris Bayaki. As Maureen mentioned, this is the 15th annual Haiku Festival Awards program, and we'd like to start off with our first winning poet, Elizabeth Augustine. Please come forward. Elizabeth Augustine. I'm Elizabeth Augustine, I'm 10 years old, and I'm in fourth grade, and I go to St. Symphorosa. The pond is quiet, the only noise is a swan swimming gracefully. The pond is quiet, the only noise is a swan swimming gracefully. Thank you, Elizabeth. Please welcome Emma Dierichs. Emma Dierichs. Hi, my name is Emma Dierks. I am 10 years old and I am in the fourth grade. I go to Christ the King School. This is my poem. Ocean waves flowing, the water dives on the sand. Hear the foam popping. Ocean waves flowing, the water dives on the sand. Hear the foam popping. Thank you, Emma. Please welcome Loza Yared. Hello, my name is Loza Yared. I am 10 years old and in the fourth grade. I go to the Academy of the Sacred Heart, and here is my poem. He packed all his things. He said his goodbyes to me. He never came back. He packed all his things. He said his goodbyes to me. He never came back. Thank you, Losa. Please welcome Michelle Yu. My name is Michelle Yu. I'm 12 years old. I'm in sixth grade and I go to Haynes Elementary. Silver line clouds high, all the chances in the world, yet she wanted gold. Silver line clouds high, all the chances in the world, yet she wanted gold. Thank you, Michelle. Please welcome Lucy Bruns. Hi, I'm Lucy Bruns. I'm 12 years old, and I'm in sixth grade at the Avery Coonley School. A noisy kitchen, all the family gathered, being together. A noisy kitchen, all the family gathered, being together. Thank you, Lucy. Please welcome Jordan Marshall. Okay. That's okay. I'm not Jordan Marshall. I'm her teacher, and I'm reading for her. She's in France right now. Um, so Jordan is 12, and she's in the sixth grade at the Avery Coonley School. Hear my voice ring out. I am strong. I am female. Our time has arrived. Hear my voice ring out. I am strong. I am female, our time has arrived. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we have a star among us. That was Miss Alexis Bryant, and she read Jordan Marshall's poem. Thank you very much, Miss Bryant. Please welcome Fermi Boonstra. My name is Fermi Bonstra. 
I'm 13 years old, and I'm an eighth grader at the University of Chicago Laboratory Schools. Old graffiti notes fill the bricks with cries for help. The wall crumbles down. Old graffiti notes fill the, wall, fill the bricks with cries for help. The wall crumbles down. Thank you very much, Fermi. I'm very happy to report that Fermi is the second person in her family to win an award for Haiku Festival. A few years back, her brother won. So thank you very much for your poem. Please welcome Sophia Nidaskowski. Hello, I'm Sophia Nidaskowski. I'm in seventh grade, 13 years old, and go to the University of Chicago Laboratory Schools. I sit out and stare, the wind whistles through my hair, tingles on my cheeks. I sit out and stare, the wind whistles through my hair, tingles on my cheeks. Thank you, Sophia. Please welcome Sasha Watson. Sasha Watson. Hello everyone, my name is Sasha Watson. I'm 13 years old and I'm a seventh grader at the University of Chicago Laboratory Schools. Little raindrop sits upon a leaf, reflecting the vast azure sky. Little raindrop sits upon a leaf, reflecting the vast azure sky. Thank you very much, Sasha Watson. Now we will welcome the winner of the Gwendolyn Brooks Award. Please welcome Imani Johnson. Hello everyone, I am Imani Johnson. I am in the seventh grade and 12 years old and I go to Amelia Earhart Elementary School. I visit a friend, he's surrounded by others and six feet under. I visit a friend, he's surrounded by others and six feet under. Thank you very much, Irmani. I hope that the winners of these awards will be inspired to look up the poets' names. I happen to be uh, fortunate enough to know Gwendolyn Brooks, and I know she would be very proud to hear the way you read your poem today. So thank you very much. Please welcome Rashad Armstrong. He's the winner of the Founders Award. Rashad Armstrong. My name is Rashad. I am, sixth, I am in sixth grade. I am 11 and I go to John C. Haynes Elementary School. The grace of my soul, drifting from reality, feel my spirit rise. The grace of my soul, drifting from reality, feel my spirit rise. That was beautiful, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you very much. Josie Haas is one of our honorable mentions. Please welcome Josie Haas. My name is Josie Haas. I'm 10 years old and in fourth grade, and I go to Sacred Heart. I went on a ship, didn't see the coral reef. I never came back. I went on a ship, didn't see the coral reef, I never came back. Please welcome Levin Matthews. Hello, I'm Levin Matthew, and I'm 13 years old. I'm in seventh grade, and I go to Plum Grove Junior High. See the silent lawn. Green grass rolls in tiny waves. Beaks descend on stalks. See the silent lawn. Green grass rolls in tiny waves. Beaks descend on stalks.
Levin Matthews won number one poem of the school for Plum Grove, but I would be remiss if I did not mention that this year we had over 2,068 poems. So to have these 30 young men and women on stage, that means a lot. So just bear that in mind that uh, this, these are the students who rose to the top. I also want to say to all the teachers who are here, this year I would like to issue a long list as well as a short list because I think it's important for students to know that of the 2,068 uh, poems, you know, just because they're not on stage does not mean that their poem did not catch the judge's eye, the judge's ear, or touch our hearts. So please look for that long list, that short list, and encourage those students whose names are on that list to keep trying. Our next award I will present goes to Ms. Rebecca Grober. Ms. Rebecca Grober is the Teacher of the Year. Please welcome her. Um, I am the English Language Arts Teacher at Haynes Elementary. I am very proud to announce I have four winners this year. Um, it's not about me, it's about them. And I attempted to write a haiku this week, and it was very frustrating. I just want to share that with everybody. I just kept on going five, seven, and so I never completed it. I started off with organized bedlam, hair on fire, eight to three. I was writing about a teacher, and it was the last line that I was playing with the words all week, and I couldn't think of a very clever ending. But I would like to thank Regina, I would like to thank the Haiku Fest, and all of these children. And I've been teaching a long time, I'm gonna get emotional. But it's about you, parents, teachers, and it's about them and all of the students in the city of Chicago and the students around the world. Thank you. Thank you. I have two last lines. My first last line to Miss Rebecca's Gro Ms. Rebecca Grover's poem is, isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? My suggested second last line is, thanks for your hard work. Thanks for your hard work. And I mean that sincerely. I've been in the classroom. I've taught K through PhD. I know the joys and the sorrows and the slings and the arrows. So thank you, one and all. At this time, we would like to recognize uh, the School of the Year. Oh, excuse me. We have some honorable mentions for Teacher of the Year. Is Mindy Gonzalez here? Mindy Gonzalez teaches at Josephine Locke Elementary. Ms. Lauren McNeela teaches at Norman Bridge Elementary. So thank you so much for sending in your poems, making sure that you answered all of my emails and phone calls because you helped make this day possible. We also uh, issue a School of the Year Award and that goes to Josephine Locke. And there are a group of men and women there who make this program possible. Mindy Gonzalez uh, is one of the teachers at um, Josephine Locke Elementary, and she's been participating in the program for at least 10 years, so thank you very much. An honorable mention goes to John Haynes Elementary, Miss Rebecca Grober, whom you just heard from, Avondale Logandale Elementary School, Miss Nilsa Lopez Lena, Norman Bridge Elementary School, again, Miss Lauren Magnila. At this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Cynthia Solomon to come up and say a few words. Ms. Solomon is responsible for the artwork that you see on the program. So please welcome Cynthia Solomon. Hi. Okay. Thank you. Last year, when Ms. Regina first asked us to come up with an idea for the art for the cover, she said, anything you want. Thought about it, and I said, wait a minute, we just finished 
a whole lesson on the tan. The tan, the Japanese art form using positive and negative space. Me doing this, my kids are going, well, I'll do that. It has no color. I said, but it has what? It has depth, it has interest, and it's exciting. And you have to use what comes naturally to you to create the yin and yang, positive and negative. How do the two work together? My friend here, she may not be vocal, but by the way, she can put together a tan worth your money. Watch her in the future. She's going to be an artist worth reckoning with. Not only has she done this and created a lot of Natans for this particular one, she's done exceptional ones that we're hanging in our school. So thank you very much. And thank the kids who put up with me for screaming and yelling. I do that a lot. So thank you very much. Bye. Come on, baby. neglected to mention that Ms. Cynthia Solomon is the fine arts teacher at Alex Haley Academy. And I've been to that classroom. Uh, it is just, the classroom is a work of art. The school is a work of art. I love the way it's decorated and just the whole spirit of the school. I think Alex Haley would be proud. Uh, we move now to the um, number one poem of the school awards. Please welcome Mr. Andre Jones. Andre Jones, come to the microphone, please. Um, I'm Andre Jones, I'm 13, and I go to Alex Haley Academy and I'm seventh grade. The Alligator. Glides through the swampy waters, waiting for dinner. The alligator glides through the swampy waters, waiting for dinner. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Please welcome Isabel Wallingford. Isabel Wallingford. Hi, my name is Isabel Wallingford. I'm in fourth grade and I'm nine years old. And the school I go to is Avondale Logandale. And this is my poem. Rainy skies are gray, a mother nature surprise. Droplets make me sleep. Rainy skies are gray, a mother nature surprise. And droplets make me sleep. Thank you very much, Ms. Wallingford. Please welcome Gael Granados. Hello, my name is Gael Ivan Granados. I am 14 years old and eighth grade at Galileo Scholastic Academy. Uh, all, all of it is art. The weird smile, your undone hair. Appreciate it. All of it is art. The weird smile, your undone hair. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Granados. I love that poem. Please welcome Alexander Sarnatsky. Hi, I am Alexander Sarnetsky. I am in fourth grade. I am 10 years old, and I go to High Point Elementary. And this is why I wrote, the smell of spring air, coyotes howl in the dark, lay down on the ground. The smell of spring air, coyotes howl in the dark, lay down on the ground. Thank you very much, Mr. Sarnatsky. Please welcome Yalen Shi.
Hello, I am Yao Lin Shi. I am nine years old, and I'm a fourth grader at James Ward Elementary School. Sockeye salmon dart. They swim in the giant lakes with their great nature. Sockeye salmon dart in the giant lakes. They, oh, they swim in the giant lakes with their great nature. Thank you very much, Ms. Shi. Please welcome Itzel Clemente. Good morning, my name is Itzel Clemente. I'm nine years old, I'm in third grade. I go to Michael M. Byrne Elementary School. This is my poem. The owl saw herself in the reflecting coal pond. It flew away fast. The owl saw herself in the reflecting coal pond. It flew away fast. I would like to ask Ms. Clemente to read her poem one more time. It's such a beautiful poem. I think if she could read it just a little bit slower, you can ride that beauty wave with her. Would you mind? One more time, please, nice and slow. The owl saw herself in the reflecting coal pond. It flew away fast. Thank you. The owl saw herself in the reflective pond. It reminds me of, uh, I guess I can say Narcissus. Oh well. <laughs> Please welcome Isabella Figueroa. My name is Isabella Figueroa. I was 12 when I wrote this poem. I'm in grade seven and I attend near North Montessori School. Nestled in her heart, the shadows hugging tightly when no one else would. Nestled in her heart, the shadows hugging tightly when no one else would. That is so beautiful, Isabella. Thank you very much. Please welcome Cielo Barrera. <laughs> My name is Cielo Barrera. I am in sixth grade. I'm 11 years old. I go to Bateman Elementary School. This is my poem. Dear broken mirror, you are now broken like me, but glue can't fix me. Dear broken mirror, you are now broken like me, but glue can't fix me. Thank you, Ms. Barrera. That is such a beautiful poem, and I just want to uh, say that when the judges come to the stage, you will hear us respond to a poem that touched us, and that is the one that I chose. So that poem is very near and dear to my heart. Please welcome Ms. Waverly Adams. Hello, my name is Waverly Adams. I am 13 years old, and I Go, at, go to Pope John the 23rd. Ocean glittering, time of beauty not yet nigh, come dance with the waves. Ocean glittering, time of beauty not yet nigh, come dance with the waves. So beautiful, thank you very much, Miss Adams. Please welcome Ryan Stanick, Ryan Stanick. Now would be a perfect time to turn off any electronic devices. <laughs> I think the MC forgot to say that. Ms. Ryan Stanick. Hello, I am Ryan Stanick. I am 11 years old and I am in sixth grade. I go to St. Francis Borgia School. Old dinosaur bones, relics roaring and roaming, once living creatures. Old dinosaur bones, Relics roaring and roaming, once living creatures. Thank you very much, Ryan. I appreciate that. 
Uh, Ryan's teacher, Ms. Paula Setafrati, is one of the teachers who's been with Haiku Festival since its inception. So thank you very much for coming back. We appreciate it. Please welcome Ellie Rademeyer. Hello everyone, my name is Ellie Rademacher. I'm 12 years old, I'm in grade six and I go to St. Monica Academy. Here's my poem. Strum of the guitar, press of the piano's keys, distant melodies. Strum of the guitar, press of the piano's keys, distant melodies. Thank you very much, Ms. Rademacher. Please welcome Finn Hogan. My name is Finn Hogan. Hogan. I am 11 years old, and I am in fifth grade at St. Vitor Elementary School. Spring has come again. Fish leap through melted water, flowers in the air. Spring has come again. Fish leap through melted water, flowers in the air. That is so beautiful and so appropriate. Hopefully, Mother Nature will hear his poem. <laughs> Please welcome Diamond Samuels. <laughs> Hi, my name is Diamond Samuels. I attend Washington Ever Elementary School. I'm in fifth grade, and I'm 10 years old. Kinky, poofy hair. Natural and beautiful, my crown and my pride. Kinky, poofy hair, natural and beautiful, my crown and my pride. Thank you so much, Diamond. What a beautiful poem and a beautiful name. At this time, we'd like to welcome our musical guest, and I'll ask her to come up as I'm introducing her. We have in our midst Kinye Obiaye. Miss Kinye Obiaye is a violist and a pianist. She plays viola and piano. Today she will be playing piano. And as she makes her way to the stage, I just want to tell you a little bit about her. She is an award-winning artist. She has been on radio and television. She was on recently WBEZ with the morning show with its former host, Tony Sarabia. She is a sought after pianist who is the co-principal violist of the CYSO Philharmonic Orchestra. And if you don't know them, it's a youth orchestra filled with young people uh, like Ms. Kinye Obiaye. She has two selections for us today and they are listed in your program. Please welcome her as she performs one piece by Alan Hovanis, Macedonian Mountain Dance, followed by Sonata in E minor by Franz Josef Haydn, who was Beethoven's teacher. So please welcome Kinye Obiaye.
Let's hear one more time for Kenye Obiayi. If you're not busy, we've booked uh, Kenye again for uh, Sunday, I believe it's May 26th, uh, a, a, a musical organization that I belong to. She will be playing at the Dead Club Youth Concert. That is the Sunday uh, of Memorial Day weekend, and that is at St. Thomas Episcopal Church, 3801 South Wabash. So we hope you can join us. Now we go to the honorable mentions. And we will begin with Jesse Carpintero. Hello, I'm Jesse Carpintero, and I'm 12 years old. I'm in sixth grade, and I go to Jameson Elementary School. In the dark abyss, the celestial planets withhold deep secrets. In the dark abyss, the celestial planets withhold deep secrets. Thank you very much, Yessi. Please welcome Natalie Galindo. Natalie Galindo. My name is Natalie Galindo. I'm 10 years old in fourth grade, and I attend High Point Elementary. Dolphins are shrieking that the water is freezing. They want some fresh fish. Dolphins are shrieking that the water is freezing. They want some fresh fish. Thank you very much. Ms. Galindo comes all the way from Orland Park, is it? That's a very long way. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming. Please welcome Emma Sesla. Hi, my name is Emma Chesla. I'm 13 years old. I'm in seventh grade at the University of Chicago Laboratory Schools. Wish upon a star. No, not that one. It's broken. Wish upon a star. No, not that one, it's broken. Believe me, I've tried. I love that poem, it really rocks. Okay, please welcome Ki Ting Mei. Ki Ting Mei. My name is Ki Ting Mei. I'm 12 years old. I'm in sixth grade, and I'm in John C. Hanks Elementary School. My hand like to clap, but I don't let my hand clap. My hand don't like me. My hands like to clap, but I don't let my hand clap. Uh, my hand don't like me. Thank you very much, Ms. May. Please welcome Caitlin Brock. Caitlin Brock. Hello, my name is Caitlin Brock. I am 13 years old. I am in the seventh grade, and I attend Amelia Earhart Elementary. As pain grows inside, as skies break down with thunder, howling winds roar loud. As pain grows inside, as skies break down with thunder, howling winds roar loud. Thank you. So beautiful and with such depth. Thank you very much, Ms. Brock. Please welcome Jocelyn Roman. Jocelyn Roman. Hi, everybody. My name is Jocelyn Roman. I'm 11 years old. I go to sixth grade, and I'm in Josephine Locke Elementary School. This is my poem. Roses are not black, violets are not red, love stories are sad. Roses are not black, violets are not red, love stories are sad. That is so beautiful, Jocelyn. Thank you so much.
please welcome Kamira Harrison. Kamira Harrison. My name is Kamira Harrison. I'm 11 years old. I'm in sixth grade and I go to John C. Haynes Elementary School. My poem is The Door Creeks Open, Letting Me Inside the Pain, Seeing the Dark Side. The Door Creeks Open, Letting Me Inside the Pain, Seeing the Dark Side. Excuse me, Kamira, would you mind reading that one more time, just a little slower, a lot slower, and a little louder, please? The Door Creeks Open, Letting Me Inside the Pain, Seeing the Dark Side. Thank you very much. Did I miss any poets at all? Are there any names that I did not call? I'd like to introduce you to the two artists who did the artwork for our front cover and our back cover. And I don't know if they will speak, but please receive Shanice Thomas and Nina Grice. Please come forth. Hello everyone, my name is Nina Grice and I'm 12 years old and I go to Alex Haley Academy. Today I will be talking about my cover art for the poem on the back of your pamphlets. So I use the Notan technique that I learned from my art teacher, Ms. Solomon, in my foreign arts class at my school. Note, Notan is Japanese for the art of paper cutting. Artists play with light and dark elements. I cut, compost, place, and replace elements. Three-dimensional art is made using two-dimensional techniques. Notan is known for light, dark harmony. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shanice Thomas, Asian, and I created the front cover art and I go to Alex Haley Academy and I use and I use the tan techniques to create my art and I believed in myself that I would make the front cover and I did. Right. At this time, I'm going to ask everyone in row one to please stand. I want you to give them another hand, and then I'll ask them to return to their parents. Everyone in row one on both sides, please stand. I think when you stand, poets, you can look like you're smiling and not like you're... <laughs> Not like you're going to a guillotine. Row two, please stand. Give them another hand. Row three, are you ready for your close up? Please stand. Thank you very much, row three. And holding down the back, mighty row four. <laughs> of course, we always have to have the two brightest and shiniest stars in the back row. So I'll ask them to walk up front so you can see them as they take their bow. Now there is method to my madness. At this time, I would like to clear all the chairs from the stage, and while that is happening, uh, make sure that they're out of camera sight. I would like to ask all of the teachers in the audience to please stand so that we can thank you for all of your hard work. We appreciate you participating every year. 
without you working in that classroom every day, this would not be possible. So if all the teachers could please stand. I would like at this time to ask all the parents to please stand because I know how hard it is getting up in the morning, getting kids fed, clothed, and ready for school. Thank you so much, parents. I really appreciate you coming with your children. I appreciate your patience as we take attendance and do sound checks and all of those things. And now the seventh inning stretch is over. So we can come back and redirect our attention to the Haiku Festival judges. All the judges who are here today, if you could please come to the stage and prepare to read your poem. As I mentioned earlier, each judge chose one poem that he or she would respond to, and at this time they will read that poem that they chose and their response. If you would like to follow along, please look on page seven, on page seven, and you'll see where it says judges haiku. The judge will read the student's poem that inspired his or her haiku and then read his haiku. Now I said each judge chose one. One judge actually chose one page of poems per grade level. And so he was really moved and really touched, or he's just touched. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we've narrowed it down to one poem because we don't want this to be a marathon. So, I will welcome the judges. Would you like to go first, Michael? Please welcome Michael Covenant Watson. Okay. This poem was written by Ellie Rademacher at St. Monica's Academy. Her poem was, Strum of the Guitar, Press of the Piano Keys, Distant Melodies. Strum of the Guitar, Press of the Piano's Keys, Distant Melodies. Now, I'm a, I'm a 60s kid, 70s kid, so this poem was an answer to her, but it was also kind of a homage to one of my favorite musicians, George Clinton. Any, any George Clinton fans out here? Enough said. All right. Spinning maggot brain, polyrhythmic shrieks genius, jazz and rock transcend. Spinning maggot, spinning maggot brain, polyrhythmic shrieks genius, jazz and rock transcend. All right. Our next judge is Judy Bowden. She is a former CPS elementary school teacher. Please welcome Judith Bowden. I wrote a poem in response to Fair Me Boonstra's poem, but last night, around about two o'clock when I should have been asleep, I wrote a poem for all the poets that entered the contest. I was so impressed by, all, by so many of the poems, by, probably by all of them. And uh, there was so much depth, depth and so much beauty in them. And so at two o'clock in the morning, I wrote, you must keep writing. God has given you a gift to share with the world. And that's to all of you. Miss Bolden, would you read that one more time, please? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> you must keep writing. God has given you a gift to share with the world. Now, Fermi wrote a poem, and I just, it just touched me a lot. And her poem was, 
old graffiti notes fill the bricks with cries for help. The walls crumble down. Old graffiti notes fill the bricks with cries for help. The walls crumble down. In response, I wrote, fearless soldiers make their marks on decaying walls. Who can translate them? Fearless soldiers make their marks on decaying walls. Who can translate them? Thank you. Please welcome our next judge, Dr. Wayne Allen Jones. Good morning. This is one of my favorite things to do, is being part of the uh, Haiku Festival. It really is uh, encouraging to see so many students are getting an excellent introduction into the terror and the joy of writing. I'm responding to Ermani Johnson's poem. She's from Amelia Earhart School. She wrote, I visit a friend. He's surrounded by others and six feet deep. I visit a friend. He's surrounded by others and six feet deep. And this is my response. I find his name etched. Stones cramped, aligned, narrow rows. Some folks stacked three deep. I find his name etched. Stones cramped, aligned, narrow rows. Some folks stacked three deep. Thank you. Please welcome Professor Samuel Barber, and he will read his poems. Professor Samuel Barber. Good morning, everybody. I wanted to. Uh, respond to a poem by Miss Lozy Yard. Her poem was, he packed all his things. He said his goodbyes to me. He never came back. Say it again. He packed all his things. He said his goodbyes to me. He never came back. And here's my response. Down on the corner, in the presence of absence, breathe in, look up, go. Down on the corner, in the presence of absence, breathe in, look up, go. Thank you. The poem that I would like to respond to was written by Cielo Barrera. She is a student at Newton Bateman School. Dear Broken Mirror, you are now broken like me, but glue can't fix. Excuse me, but glue can't fix me. Once again, the poem by Cielo Barrera. Dear broken mirror, you are now broken like me, but glue can't fix me. And I was inspired to write, cracked looking glass shows, brokenness made whole again, till circus breaks camp. Cracked looking glass 
shows brokenness made whole again till circus breaks camp. Thank you very much. I'm now on page four of the program. And while I'm introducing our guest poet, I was wondering if you could please put a chair center stage with two, my, uh, two music stands. And if we could lower that piano lid just for safety's sake. Professor Janice Harrington is a poet and author of children's books. She won a National Endowment for the Arts Literature Fellowship for Poetry and a Rona Jaffe Foundation Writers Award. Her children's books, Going North, which was published in 2004, and The Chicken Chasing Queen of Lamar County, published in 2007, won many awards, citations, and is listed among Time Magazine's top 10 children's books. And the Ezra Jack Keats Award from the New York Public Library. Professor Harrington's first book of poetry, Even the Hollow of My Back, Even the Hollow My Body Made is Gone. Even the Hollow My Body Made is Gone appeared in 2007 and won many awards. Her next book of poems, The Hands of Strangers, Poems from the Nursing Home, came out in 2011. Her third book of poems, Primitive, The Art and Life of Horace H. Pippin, appeared in 2016. Professor Harrington's poetry appears regularly in literary magazines throughout the country. She has worked as a public librarian. She now teaches creative writing at the University of Illinois, Urbana. For tips on teaching her book, please visit her website. At this time, I ask you to welcome Professor Janice Harrington. three things that I know I want to do. Number one, I want to thank Regina Harris Biachi for this Biachi? Biachi for this for this amazing festival. So big round of applause. Oh, come on. Bigger than that. Bigger. I also want to thank the Chicago Poetry committee and Chicago Public Libraries and all of you for being here, all the parents, all the teachers, everyone. I, you can't start the 2019 Haiku Festival without sharing your favorite haiku. And my favorite haiku, which was written by the poet Batso, is a large pond, a frog jumps in, splash. And the other thing I want to make sure that you all know is that I love words. I love to read them, sing them, shout them, but most of all, share them. I'm going to share two poems by other poets that I especially love before I do my own poems. And these are poems that y'all are going to help me with. Are you ready? What I say, you're going to say. If I say it loud, you say it loud. If I say it soft, you say it soft. If I go like this, you go like that, all right? If you are over the age of 30, consider this your aerobic exercise for the week. If you are a teacher, you are setting a role model for your students. And if you're under the age of 30, join in and show these big folks how it's done. Are you ready? All right, stand up. Quickly, stand up. Yeah. This poem that I'm going to share with you was written by the poet Eloise Greenfield. Can you say that? And her book is the, one of the best books on the whole planet. It's called Honey, I Love. Can you say that? Honey, I love. So when I'm done, you just rush right out and you get that book. Here we go. And I'm going to try it like this. Way too far. Way too far.
what you standing up for? Sit down. <laughs> All right. Um, I just found a brand new poem by Nikki Giovanni that I adore. Can you say Nikki Giovanni? Nikki Giovanni. And the name of her poem is Rosa Parks. Can you say Rosa Parks by Nikki Giovanni? All right, let's see if we can do this one together. Are you ready? Okay. Do what I do, say what I say, repeat after me. Do the Rosa Parks say no, no. Do the Rosa Parks say no, no. What happened? Y'all just got pitiful in between those two poems. <laughs> that was really bad. You sit down and like all the energy drains out of you. This is not good. Let's try it again. Do the Rosa Parks say no, no. Do the Rosa Parks say no, no. Do the Rosa Parks throw your hands in the air. Do the Rosa Parks throw your hands in the air. And y'all don't know where your hands are. <laughs> Let's try it again. Do the Rosa Again, are you ready? I'm going to coach you through it. Are you ready? Here we go. Do the Rose of Hearts say no, no? Do the Rose of Hearts say no, no? Do the Rose of Hearts throw your hands in the air? Do the Rose of Hearts throw your hands in the air? Do the Rose of Hearts say no, no? Do the Rose of Hearts say no, no? Do the Rose of Hearts tell them that's not fair? Do the Rose of Hearts say that's not fair? Somebody's lying. Rose of Hearts. you to know how much I love singing, shouting, playing with words, but I especially like writing poetry. And obviously at a haiku fest, I need to share some haiku poems. But my most recent book for children is an entire novel written in poems. You start from the beginning and read all the way to the end. And inside, there's all kinds of different poems, and some of them are haiku. Do you remember when you were in school and all you wanted to do was get out? Do you remember that? Remember when you were watching the clock? And remember the teachers going on and on and on, and you think it'll never end? This is a haiku. That clock is a snail. Snail, I want to go home now. Move. Fast, snail, move fast. The school cafeteria. Do you remember that? Remember the smells in the cafeteria? Remember the disgusting things they would feed you in a school cafeteria? Which some days were good days, you'd get pizza. So here's another haiku. Cheesy pizza smell. Grab the trays and lunch boxes. 
we can't wait to eat. And yet another haiku in the book. Imagine two girls, and they are just, they don't know each other, but they're looking at each other kind of out of the corner of their eye. One girl says, why is she smiling? Does she want to be my friend? Should I talk to her? And the other girl says, why doesn't she smile? Doesn't she want to be my friend? Should I talk to her? All right. But what I really want to tell you about this book is that it's a love story. And it's about a little girl called Katherine Walker. But nobody calls her that. They call her Keet Keet Parakeet because that child is always talking. And I want you to get a sense of what she's like. This is Keet Keet Parakeet. Keet, you'd talk the whiskers off a catfish, Grandpa says, and the shine off a new penny. Grab the glue, grab the tape, Daddy says. Keet, if you keep talking, I'll need to stick on an extra pair of ears. They're right. I like to talk. I like to spin stories. This is what I did stories. This is what I saw stories. Stories to make my brother giggly, bouncy, and wiggly as a worm. Stories to make daddy lean in and hold me octopus tight. Stories to make mama's eyes shine birthday candle bright. My teacher used to say, Catherine, that's a good story, but why don't we give someone else a turn? I think she meant I said enough. My grandma used to say, only thing wrong with the duck is its bill. I think she meant I go quack, quack, quack. But mama says, Keith, you're a born storyteller. You're my little par parakeet. You always have something to say. And that's, you always have to something to say. And that's why my friends call me Keet Keet Parakeet. That's story talking, story making girl. Now Keet, she lives in Alabama when the story starts. And she gets this bad news that her parents are moving north, and she's not exactly happy about it. In fact, when they get up there, her mother says to her, look on the bright side. There isn't any. Mama says, count your blessings. Zero. Mama says, every cloud has a silver lining. Where? Show me one. Mama says, Keith, you'll find something good here if you look hard enough. I try, 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 but I only see one good thing, Grandpa. If there's anybody that Keith loves in the whole wide world more than a little brother who drives her crazy, it's her Grandpa. She loves her Grandpa more than anything. And every Friday, she calls him. Now, Keith is his fishing buddy. They, go get to, they used to get to go fishing together only in the summers. But now that she's moved north, she can go fishing with him all the time. And he has a nickname for her. He calls her fish bait. So she calls him. And I want you to get a sense of what they're like together. Grandpa, what are you doing? I'm doing. I'm talking to you. Grandpa, you want to go fishing? Wishing. Well, I wish I could take a good nap. No, Grandpa, not wishing, fishing. Do you want to go fishing? Hissing? No, I don't hear anything hissing. No, Grandpa, fishing. Do you want to go fishing? Is this my fish bait talking or some old snake? Grandpa, you're just being silly. I want to go fishing. You want to go fishing? Yes, Grandpa. Well, isn't that something? I was just thinking about doing a little fishing. Would you like to go? Yes, Grandpa. And so they spend all the time that they can together. And she loves going fishing with her Grandpa. But Keith has a kind of a special fishing technique. When other people put worms on their hook, uh, Keith likes to use marshmallows. And you'll find a marshmallow on a fish hook inside of the book. And I can tell that y'all don't believe me. Yeah, a fish hook marshmallow poem. Let's see. In fact, let's read the poem called Fish Bait. Grandpa baits his fishing hook, and then he tries to bait mine. He plucks a worm out of a coffee tin. No, Grandpa, too tickly. He pushes a dough ball from a plastic sack. No, Grandpa, too stinky. 
He pulls a froggy kind of thingy from his tackle box. No, Grandpa, too rubbery slippery. Well, fish bait, how do you plan to catch a fish? I rub my nose and think a bit, and then I look in my lunch sack. Marshmallow, Grandpa, I'll bait my hook with a marshmallow. Kate Keat is up north. She's with her grandpa, who she loves, but she's got to go to a new school. Raise your hand if you've ever gone to a new school or if you've ever been the first person to do something and everybody's staring at you. Do you remember that feeling? This is Keat's first day of school. It's called fish hook eyes. Their eyes look like pencil points. Their eyes go scribble, scribble, and poke, poke. Their eyes are fish hooks. Class, this is Catherine Walker. Catherine, can you tell us where you went to school before? Vernon Elementary, I say. A boy in the front row laughs. A girl says, you sound funny. And where is that, Catherine? I didn't know that words could have hard edges. I didn't know that words could get stuck in your throat. In Alabama, I say. But I don't say it very loud. And the teacher asked me to repeat it. Alabama. Alabama? Well, very good. Welcome to your new school, Catherine. I have friends from the South, and I'll look forward to learning more about you. Yes, ma'am, I whisper, but already I can tell I made another mistake. Nobody says that here. I feel their eyes again. Their eyes are sharp teeth that want to gnaw and nibble me away. She's having a hard time at school, but slowly, gradually, things get better. She makes a friend. She gets to settle in. She discovers the library. Things are maybe looking up, but then disaster strikes. An ordinary day. It seemed like an ordinary day. I sat at my desk practicing my spelling words, erasing my math, reading about reptiles. It seemed like an ordinary day, but then the school office called my teacher. My teacher looked at me. It seemed like an ordinary day. Catherine, please gather up your things. You need to go to the office. It seemed like an ordinary day, but Mama was in the office, and Noah, too, with his backpack and his book about kangaroos. He likes animals, my little brother. He likes worms and bugs. I watch him kick, kicking at the rug. It seemed like an ordinary day, but then Mama said, we need to go, Catherine. Something bad has happened. Something bad when I was at school. Something bad when I was spelling octopuses or octopi. Something bad when I divided 5,408 by 22. Something bad when alligator passed me a note. You want to come over after school? It seemed like an ordinary day, but it wasn't. It wasn't ordinary because her grandfather has a mild stroke. He comes home from the hospital, and he's not himself. He's depressed. He won't get out of bed. He won't do anything. This is a story, a love story, about a little girl who decides she's going to get her grandfather out of that bed. She's going to take this new grandfather and turn him back into her old grandfather. But how does she do that? Well, Catherine does it the only way she knows how. She's going to talk him out of that bed. She starts telling him every story that she knows. And I just want to read one of those, po those stories to you before I say goodbye. Would you mind if I do that? That would be the correct answer. <laughs> Keith's story about Grandpa, about the terrible, horrible kid-eating dog. Once. Noah and I walked to the store. It was an old store, a neighborhood store, with a screen door that whacked and slammed. It smelled like coffee and had rows of shelves and a cooler with popsicles and ice cream and boxes of candy and gumballs for a quarter. We had six quarters and 25 pennies. We walked past the houses, past the fences, past the mailboxes, past our new school, until we reached the yellow and brown house with the low gate. Then I went tiptoe, tiptoe along the sidewalk, going by the house, tiptoe quiet and tiptoe quick. But Noah went clop, 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 because he had on daddy's shoes. 
We had almost made it to the next house when across the yard of the yellow and brown house and through its low gate ran the scariest dog in the whole wide world, a big-eyed, pointy-eared, sharp-toothed, snotty-nosed chihuahua. And it barked and barked and barked and Noah, at Noah and me, and then it chased us. I was scared. I ran. Noah was scared. He ran, or tried to, clop, 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 clop. He, he started to cry and call my name, but I was too scared. I ran fast for the store, for the squeaky screen door that would whack and slam behind me. I'm faster than nose, and the terrible chihuahua was right behind him. Clop, 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 clop. Then the old man who lived in the yellow and brown house gave a sharp whistle. The dog stopped. He turned and trotted back to his yard like a little yellow king, a horrible monster dog, a kid catcher. Noah cried for a long time. I felt bad. I didn't save him. I wasn't a superhero or a wizard. I didn't have a magic cape. So I let him have five quarters and all the pennies. I took the last quarter and bought a gumball. He got a popsicle and ate it all by himself and didn't give me any. And now my last haiku. Popsicle sunshine melting on my brother's lips. Can I have a lick? Thank you. She's fast. I was going to ask her to read that haiku again. Please give another round of applause to <laughs> Professor Janice Harrington. Thank you so much, Janice Harrington. That was beautiful. I look forward to reading some of your books and giving them as gifts. It has become a tradition for our awards program to close with Tsukasa Taiko. They are a Taiko Japanese drumming ensemble, and we're very, very happy to have them here. You will definitely hear them, and they have generally beautiful costumes, beautiful drums, and in the tradition of ending our program with the Taiko drummers, I am very, very happy to welcome them. I also would like to thank the Chicago Poetry Committee. The Chicago Poetry Committee is made up of librarians around the city of Chicago. And I would also like to thank Harold Washington Library. Harold Washington Library has been kind enough to sponsor us year after year. And I also want to thank some of our donors, our anonymous donors, Deepak Dale, who is at the reception desk, Ray Myra Hilliard, Evangeline Lacey, she's the young lady who will be sitting here with your checks. Thank you to Poets and Writers, Inc. They were very nice to co-sponsor this event. Valerie Wallace, who sponsors the Gwendolyn Brooks Award every year. Thank you to Can TV and our cameraman Chris and Rob Gilletta. Thank you to Greg Bayaki, who was also at the reception desk, to Kathy and Bob Egner, who are underwriters of this program, Victoria Kill and Hank McGee, Karen and Daniel Livers, Doris Nichols Smith, the Haiku Festival judges and staff. Arshi Chita, who's also at the reception desk. Thank you very much, Arshi. Dr. Jody Gandolfi, Dr. Alfred Klinger, Dahlia Saper, Juanita Smith, Meg Wilhot, Sharon Kloppner. Thank you very much to the Haiku Festival um, audience. Without you, the program would not be possible. And for the staff at Harold Washington Library, Craig Davis, Jerry Keene, Carlina Cameron, Michael O'Connor, Corey Brown. Michael and Corey are in the booth there. Thank you also to 
Chicago Public Library, the Scottsdale Branch, Patricia Schrader, Chicago Public Library, the Garfield Ridge Branch, Victoria Smirnova. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our Tycho drummers. Please receive them. Thank you to Miss Regina. Um, we are Tsukasa Taiko. We are a traditional Japanese drumming ensemble um, hailing from the north side. And uh, we received this annual invitation to perform at your beautiful haiku festival with all your amazing poetries and poems and haikus by the guest poets as well as you all, wonderful students. And we're so happy to bring our youth ensemble today to showcase at your festival. So the first song uh, that we just did is called Tama which means um, a ball or a sphere, so you could kind of hear the ball rolling like in the sound. And then we're gonna present to you just one last song called Motone. And if you like to get a little bit, if you like to uh, learn a little bit more about us, our website is taikolegacy.com. And we're also on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, so come check us out. Thank you. Domo arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you. 
That concludes our program for this year, our 15th anniversary. We hope you will join us next year and hold your breath for the 17th anniversary. That will be a big one for us. Does anyone know why? Why would our 17th? Right, because there are 17 syllables in haiku. So our 17th year is gonna be really big and fabulous. Thank you so very much. Be safe and keep writing. Thank you.